alhamdulillah wa shukrillah that this uh, beautiful topic al kawthar inna atayna al kawthar verily we have given you al kawthar and the two predominant tafsir commentaries of this term kawthar the first one is a specific river in paradise and it's related to the Hawd itself, the pool of the Prophet ﷺ that all believers will drink from after which they'll never be thirsty again. And we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us amongst them. Uh, the second main tafsir or explanation of the term is al khair kathir. So for students of Arabic, al kawthar comes from the same root as kathir, which means a lot. And so it's, but it's an emphatic form. So kawthar, like tremendous good, tremendous good. And if we read the seerah and the shama'il, the seerah being the life story, the blessed biography of the Prophet ﷺ, the shama'il being the characteristics, qualities, features of his blessed person, both outward and inward, ﷺ, then it's nothing but khair kathir. I mean, every page and every paragraph and every line and every sentence is khair kathir and khair kathir and khair kathir. Tremendous good, tremendous good, tremendous good. And so literally every single volume and every single chapter of the entire intellectual and spiritual heritage of Islam is a commentary of al kawthar It's every good imaginable. And, uh, but there were specific detailed meanings that were given, that were proffered, that were, that were placed forth as to what kawthar entails. And one of the most beautiful ones is related by one of the great imams of the Sunni tradition, Imam Abu Abdurrahman as sulami he was a codifier, he was a hadith scholar and a codifier of the Sufi tradition. Him and his student, Imam Qushayri, as well as the famous Hujjad al-Islam al-Ghazali, the three of them, the triumvirate together, Sulami, Qushayri, Ghazali, they're considered the key codifiers of the inner tradition of Islam. And in his tafsir, Haqqaiq al-Tafsir, Imam Sulami cites Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, rahimahullah, on this ayah, what does al-Kawthar mean? And the great blessed Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, radiallahu anhu, that he says, Nurun fi qalbika. He says that al-Kawthar is a light in your heart. A light in your heart. Dallaka alayya wa qata'aka amman siwaya from the divine person speaking to the Prophet Sallallahu from Allah Himself. It's a light in your heart that guided you to me and cut you off from everything besides me. In other words, the light of absolute monotheism, the light of pure tawheed, recognition of Allah's oneness always. This is the foundation of all light. And it begins with the Prophet's blessed heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And therefore, from his blessed heart is all in illumination in the world. All illumination in the world comes from the source of it, the masdar, the, the primordial source of it is the blessed, luminous heart of our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is an essential meaning of al kawthar because all good comes from that blessed heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And related to this, a century later, Qadi Iyad, the great Maliki Andalusian jurist and judge, Rahimahullah, and Hadith master, in his famous book, Ash Shifa, the cure to recognize the rights of Al Mustafa, the rights of the chosen one upon us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he cites Imam Ja'far al Sadiq on the meaning of a Najm in Surah Al Najm, that Allah Ta'ala swears by the star, one Najmi ida hawa. That Allah Ta'ala swears by the star when it descends, when it sets. And what's the oath? That your companion is not astray, he's not misguided in any way, he did not, never deviated. And he does not speak from his own desire, rather it's revelation revealed unto him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on his blessed heart. That what is this star? Again, the predominant tafsir that one reads will be it's the stars of the heavens. So this, literally the stars in the heavens, Allah Ta'ala swears by that. That's the common tafsir. But Qadir Iyad cites Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq rahimahullah ta'ala as saying that the najm that Allah Ta'ala swears by in the surah is again the blessed qalb, the blessed heart of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
that Allah Ta'ala is swearing by the heart, this luminous, bright, intensely bright heart of the Prophet Sallallahu hawa, when it sets, when it descends, when it manifests in the world. And the commentator of the Shifa, Mullah Ali Al-Qari, the great Hanafi jurist and Hadith scholar of several centuries later, he says that this heart, the Ida Hawa, when it manifests, it's, it, what, what does it entail? It entails that the heart is always inclining to Allah and it's absent-minded from other than Allah, the presence of the divine in the heart of the Prophet Wasallam. And the third characteristic he describes, he says, was tighraqihi fi hubbihi, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that this blessed heart is immersed and submerged in the love of Allah Ta'ala. Immersed in the love of Allah Ta'ala. That this is the najm, this bright star that Allah Ta'ala swears by, wallahu ta'ala a'ala wa alam. And in that light, the principle of love. Because al kawthar along with the, the luminous knowledge of the divine, comes with the incredible love of the divine. And this is the, the very description of our Prophet Wasallam is Habibullah, the beloved of Allah Ta'ala. That hub, that this blessed heart was replete and istighraq, it was immersed in the love of Allah Ta'ala. That's a sunnah for us to follow. How do we invite khair kathir, tremendous good into our lives, is to follow this inner sunnah, this inner precedent. We often think of the sunnah as outward legal precedent of habits and customs of the outward life of a believer. And that is from the sunnah. But there's an inner sunnah. And the first inner sunnah after belief itself, iman, is love of the divine. Love of Allah Ta'ala. And there's a proof in the blessed seerah of our Prophet Wasallam. There's innumerable proofs. But one of the proofs is in the hijrah. In the blessed migration when the Prophet Wasallam makes the migration to Medina Munawwara, the luminous city. It used to be called Yathrib which comes from a root word of blame, tathrib. La tathrib alaykum al yom. Yathrib was a place of blame. The Os and the Khazraj, the tribes of Yathrib used to fight. There was conflict. There was ignorance, jahiliya. Until the Prophet comes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this, light, this star descends now in Yathrib and no longer is it called Yathrib. Forever we call it Medina Munawwara, the luminous city. And when he first arrived, he descended, he stopped at Quba right outside of Medina. And he stayed there for a few days before he entered on, a di- on the day of Jumu'ah into Medina proper, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in that entrance, on the way, Ibn Ishaq relates in his seerah that it came Salatul Jumu'ah, the time for the Jumu'ah prayer. And so he gave the first Jumu'ah khutbah as he is entering into Medina, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in that short but powerful khutbah, one of the most salient principles that he emphasizes sallallahu alaihi wasallam is love itself because what does he say sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ahibbu ma ahabbullah he's planting the seeds of the new community the new society the new polity the republic if you will like plato philosophized about the republic what's the perfect city aristotle did the same thing the perfect city state it manifested in time in Medina Munawwara. This is the city-state par excellence, the republic par excellence of human history, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the head of state. And so he's planting the seeds of the best polity as well, the best society, the best community, the best polity. And what does he say? Love everything that Allah loves. This is emanating from that heart that was immersed in the love of the divine. And what does he say after that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Wa ahibbu Allaha. Min kulli qulubikum, and love Allah Himself from the very bottom of your hearts. Love Allah from the depth of your hearts. Subhanallah. The first khutbah, the love of Allah Ta'ala, and not just loving Allah at a basic level, from the very min kulli qulubikum, from the entirety of your hearts. And he concludes this khutbah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the principle of love manifesting. In the community, because he says, And love one another by the tender mercy of Allah amongst you. Love one another by the tender mercy of Allah amongst you. And that love of one another, 
started with the love of the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because no one loved anyone in the world like the companions loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and like all believers till the end of time loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No human being in history, no entity, no, no idea is as beloved. Nothing has been loved more in the entirety of the cosmos than the Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one particular example of this from the Blessed Sirah that we can highlight, a beautiful story, is at one of the battles where the enemies committed treachery. They invited six of the companions as teachers. It's called the Rajir. Rajir is a well outside of Medina. They sent, one of the tribes sent ambassadors and they said, we became Muslim, we want you to send teachers. So the Prophet Sallallahu sends six companions to teach them. And they were lying and they were treacherous. And so they ambushed these blessed six companions at the well of Rajir. And they killed treacherously killed four of them and two of them were imprisoned and sold to the Quraysh in Mecca because the Quraysh, the, the Quraysh wanted, uh, they had you know a bounty out for them because they had killed some of them at Badr. And so one of them was Khubayb radiallahu anhu and the other was Zayd ibn Duthunna radiallahu anhu. And Zayd ibn Duthunna is imprisoned in Mecca and he is awaiting his execution. And Abu Sufyan ibn Harb Ibn Umayyah, the head de facto leader of Quraysh at the time, he asks Zayd ibn Duthunna radiallahu anhu, he says, Unshiduku billah. He says, I ask you by Allah. And perhaps this could be translated in English as, give me the God's honest truth. Like, be 100% honest with me. Unshiduku billah. He says, would you prefer right now that Muhammad was in your place, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you were at home comfortable with your family. And Hazrat Zayd ibn Duthunna radiallahu anhu, he says, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, I would not, li I would not like that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is pricked by a thorn right now while I'm sitting comfortable with my family. And Abu Sufyan says, he says, Wallahi, he says, by Allah, ma ra'aytu min al-nas ahadan yuhibbu ahadan ka ashabi, ka hubbi ashabi Muhammadin Muhammada, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, I swear by Allah, I never saw amongst people anyone loving anyone else like the companions of Muhammad love Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's speaking as not just a non-Muslim, not just a pagan, but the very leader of the enemies of the, of the Prophet Sallallahu And he's recognizing this profound love. This is a window to the reality of all the companions. This is a window to the reality of all the blessed companions. Allah be pleased with them, jami'an. And in that light, we wanted to return back to another meaning of kothar because how else does this love in the blessed heart of the Prophet Sallallahu how else does it manifest? We see so many examples of it manifesting in the world, in this life. But what about the next life? The supreme manifestation of that love. The supreme manifestation of that love. And we return back to Imam Sulami, rahimahullah, in his tafsir. Again, right after he cites Imam Jafar, he says, Waqala Aidan. And another time, Imam Jafar al Sadiq was asked, rahimahullah, about what's the meaning of al kothar And he says, another time, he says, Shafa'atuka li ummatik. He says the other meaning of kothar is that Allah is saying we have given you this great good, i.e. your intercession for your community, your intercession for the entire ummah. And this is the love of the Prophet manifesting in the next life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When every other Prophet, despite their own perfection, says nafsi nafsi. On that day when humanity goes to them asking for intercession, they say my own self, my own self. Because this maqam al-Mahmud, this praiseworthy station is reserved for Habibullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's reserved for the most beloved of Allah. It's reserved for what in the New Testament, wallahu alam, cited that it cites Hazrat Isa alayhi salam saying, await the paraclete. The paraclete, parakletos in Greek, which means the advocate. 
or the comforter. It has two translations that you'll find. The advocate, which in Arabic is a shafir. And so according to us, if this statement is correctly attributed to Nabi Isa, we would say that the paraclete is Sayyidina Muhammad He is the advocate par excellence. And through that advocacy, the shafa'a, the intercession on the day of judgment, everyone is comforted. Because even the prophets are saying nafsi, nafsi. But when he is granted his only, his any dua that he wants, وسلم, that he reserved for the hereafter, he says, ummati, ummati. My community, my community. And this is the great relief, the cosmic relief. What principle does this come from? What principle does this come from? This comes from the principle of mahabba, the principle of love. This is an act of love for all of humanity. The Comforter, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sheikh Yusuf al-Nabahani said the Perikletos was one of the names of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ajib, La ilaha illallah. And in that light, that will also cite that one of the beautiful descriptions, that that's a, that's a potential description in the, in the New Testament. But what about the Old Testament? And we know that the Prophet was prophesied in the Old Testament, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the Torah. And Abdullah ibn Salam, amongst others, became Muslim because he recognized they recognize him like they did their own children, the Abdullah ibn Salam and others. And so in that light, one of the early Tabi Imams, Ata ibn Yasar, he approached the great companion Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu anhuma, and he says, Describe for me the Prophet. Describe for me the Prophet. And what does this noble companion, who was a scholar of the Torah, he was a scholar of the Torah, he says, Ajal, absolutely. He is described in the Torah with some of his description in the Quran. Ya ayyuhan nabi, oh blessed prophet, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. We have sent you as a witnesser and a gospel, mubashir, the bringer of glad tidings, this supreme advocacy of love in the hereafter. Wa nadira and a warner, wa hirzan lil ummiyeen and a sanctuary for the unlettered, a sanctuary for the disenfranchised in the world, a sanctuary for the ummiyin, perhaps in the context of the Torah, a sanctuary for the Gentiles. Anta abdi wa rasuli. The description continues according to his knowledge of the Torah that Allah Ta'ala said to the Prophet, describing the coming of the Prophet Sallallahu you are my slave and my messenger. Anta abdi wa rasuli, like Allah selecting him for his own self, subhanahu wa ta'ala. For his own self. La ilaha illallah. Sammaituka al mutawakkil. I have named you the one who relies on Allah par excellence, the perfect relier on Allah ta'ala. Laysa bi fadhin wa la ghalid. He is neither harsh nor coarse with people. Nor does he shout in the marketplace. He is the master of every adab. From his mahabba, from his supreme love, he never re repays, he never responds to an evil with an evil, but rather he overlooks and forgives. وَلَنْ يَقْبِدَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَتَّى يُقِيمَ بِهِ الْمِلَّةَ الْعَوْجَاءِ بِأَنْ يَقُولُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And Allah Ta'ala will not take him in death until Allah makes straight through him the crooked nation such that they all say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَيَفْتَحْ بِهِ عَيُنٌ عُمْيَا وَآذَانٌ سُمَّا وَقُلُومٌ غُفَى And until Allah opens through him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, eyes that were blind herring that was deaf, and hearts that were sealed. Reflect on the state of Arabia before his coming in Jahiliya. The level of darkness, pagans that worshipped idols and killed each other out of revenge and vengeance and knew nothing but uh, injustice and, tra and transgression of the rights of the weak and the poor. Look at the transformation. Their eyes are open, their hearing is open, and their hearts are unveiled such that that same light from his blessed heart now transfers to the light. By the time of his passing, over 100,000 companions across Arabia, all of them immersed in that same tawheed and love of the divine saints. 
who could transform Arabia into 100,000 saints? Only the Sahib al Kothar, the master that was given tremendous good, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then after Arabia converts and Allah Ta'ala takes him, those blessed lights, look what they do to the world that within 100 years, Islam is east from China, west all the way close to Paris in France. And north, however north it gets, and south all the way down into Africa. La ilaha illallah. All of these saintly people and until the end of time, that Allah Ta'ala will not cause the end of time to occur until there's no one left on the earth saying Allah, Allah. Allah, the same dhikr that it began with in his blessed heart. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us recipients of the light of our Prophet وسلم, through being imbued with his blessings, blessed teachings outwardly and inwardly.